Hello, I'm Dr. Sandal, founder of Ama Clinic. The modern medical system is falling apart. To fix it, we need to change how we think about health, illness, and the practice of medicine. Welcome to the show, Talking Shift, where we discuss radical new perspectives on health, illness, and the practice of medicine. Joining me today is David Lovely, integrative therapist at Alma Clinic. Yeah. Good to be here. Good to have you. <clears throat> it's fun. So we, David and I were kind of thinking about what we wanted to talk about today, and uh, him and I sync on a lot of different wavelengths, and there's tons of awesome stuff yeah. that we can talk about. Um, let's start here. When people think about mental health mm -hmm. in the medical system, mm. the kind of United States, the Western world, medical system, mental health, what needs to shift about that current mm. process? I think, I think many people understand that we have a mental health crisis. That term gets thrown around a mm -hmm. lot. And you, similarly, we have all sorts of other crises of, of health issues, obesity, diabetes, these sort of things. I would argue that all of them happen and persist because our system isn't working. So mm -hmm. things need to shift. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I too, I think the the uh, the approach in the, the system needs to shift. Like when I think about mental health in the Western world, I think it's, it's so much focused on the mind and, mm. and uh, just kind of... <clears throat> approaching it just from that direction of like things happen or things exist things emerge from um, mental illness so when we think mental illness it's it's rooted in the mind okay but I think it's it's more than that and mental illness for me um, it's also like our emotional world and mm -hmm. what's happening in our emotional body and so it's different from the mind mm -hmm. well yes and mm -hmm. when I think of the mind I think of the entire body. It's the mind-body complex. It's uh -huh. one thing we seem to separate. It's like uh, we'll focus on the mind. We'll also focus on the body. When in my reality, my perspective, it's all one, uh -huh. and we can uh -huh. kind of separate and look at it. In um, we can look at the mind. We can look at the body. But they, that's somewhat artificial to separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, what needs to change? I mean, that's that. That's a, a million dollar question. I mean, and I think- That's that, what we're here to talk about, I, yeah. I think there is- We're, we're here to give million dollar content. <laughs> like, this is, after this, boom, problem solved. Let's do it. <laughs> you know, it, it is, it's, it's a radical shift. It's being able to kind of look at things and experience things and talk about things and feel through things in a different way. Um, mm -hmm. You know, one of my one of my prides and joys in the work and the service that I get to do is to hold space with people and in a way that allows them to see themselves differently. Perspective shifting. Absolutely, and yeah. doing that in a, in a place that is, is just deep in compassion. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's one area that the, the field of mental health and well-being is shifting is in an area of moving away from stigmas mm -hmm. and labels of, you know, I'm, I'm mentally ill or I have this mm -hmm. mental illness into a place of more understanding, more compassion, um, more acceptance that, you know, things are, things are happening within people's lives mm. and they're challenging. Uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And so, so less of it, this is, this is a negative, this is a label, this is a hazard and more, mm -hmm. well, these things happen in the course of a life. How do you flow with that? Mm -hmm. Am I understanding you right? Mm -hmm. How do we, yeah. How do we flow with that? How do we also, I think, what I would like to see is a is kind of a paradigm shift of the focus is on mental illness and mm -hmm. again so just part of my philosophy and the way I work with people is what we focus on grows mm -hmm. and so if we're focusing okay. on right. this idea of mental illness there's some aspect of us that we're still kind of I'm gonna use the word perpetuating uh -huh. this idea uh -huh. of illness uh -huh. And if we can shift the paradigm and shift the way that we look at it and see it and feel through it to mental wellness mm -hmm. and focusing that, it, I think it helps people begin to reorganize things and not become so like, isolated and identified with said diagnosis or said difficulties. I, I think it's hard for our current culture to appreciate how important that statement is. We see this in other fields of medicine as well, this sort of medicalization. Mm -hmm. People start to identify with a diagnosis and they go, oh, well, I, I have diabetes or I am mentally mm -hmm. ill. Mm -hmm. or 
And when we do that, you're right, we do put a lot of energy into that. And there are entire sort of cultural subsets that are created around those ideas too. You know, there are support groups and so people's identity starts to move into those. And, and it's interesting. Um, that can be a little sticky. Yeah. yeah. Interesting point. And then helping, um, helping people, like I, I like to use words, not in a way of, of like descriptors or pointing towards, not as absolutes, mm. but I think helping people begin to kind of detach or disidentify with some of those things, mm. the, the, the kind of the core of who you are or mm. what you are, and begin to see them as I'm a person first uh-huh. who okay. is experiencing uh-huh. anxiety, depression, or I'm a person first with Rather than I'm anxious. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. You know, and and yeah, there, there's a lot of depth there. It reminds me of an a idea from Ayurveda. In Ayurveda, traditional Indian medicine, there's this sense that the mind and the intelligence are distinct things. Mm-hmm. That kind of got stuck in my head when you were talking about mental, mm-hmm. mental mind. Mm-hmm. And I've always found that to be an incredibly useful concept. The idea that they talk about in Ayurveda is that the mind and the intelligence are different things. And the mind is more the automatic habit, the training, it's the unconscious thinking, it's the the constant stream, it's the dog squacing, chasing a squirrel, you know, shiny objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, you can train that one way or other. You can train it to go more that way or you can train it to be, you know, a well-behaved pup. Mm-hmm. But it's a matter of habit and training. And the thing that does the training is the intelligence. That's the decision making. And we get to say, okay, I'm engaged. What do I want to do? But the reality is that most of the time this isn't on. This is driving. It's, it's yeah. our autopilot, yeah. which, like, is great. There's a saying from Ayurveda that the mind is the greatest enemy, but it can become the greatest ally. Uh-huh. Basically meaning that if you train it and you have an yeah. autopilot that works and produces mental wellness, well, that's fantastic. Yeah. You're on a great road. It, uh, it, it reminds me of this, this saying uh, has been swimming around in my head since you started talking about the mind is a terrible servant. Mm. Or uh, it's a terrible master, right. a wonderful servant, and so the same right. thing is if we can, if we can exercise and strengthen the intelligence, the consciousness, or you know, mm-hmm. the director mm-hmm. behind that, then the mind becomes more useful and supportive rather than hindering or anxious or. What you're talking about, if you if you uh, disagree, correct me. Okay. But I think what you're talking about is you're talking about getting to the root of of mental dis-ease. You're talking about how do we figure out what is at the root of anxiety? Mm-hmm. How do we figure out what might be at the root of depression or grief or all these different things? And that's very much our approach to medicine in general. We want to get to the root of things because when we identify the root yeah. and work with the root, then the rest of everything else just... Pfft. Yeah, yes. And to take it back to what we initially started talking about, like what needs to change in the mm-hmm. mental health mm-hmm. world is, and this isn't to take anything away from anything that we've done. I think the, you know, the, the field continues to grow and mm-hmm. learn and expand. And, and if we were more focused around looking at what is the root cause mm-hmm. of these things, mm-hmm. how can we explore and, and get to the root? Because I, I wholeheartedly and completely agree with you that if we address the root, everything else that emerges mm-hmm. from that begins to resolve or have greater ease and flow or mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. just it, it yeah, every I like the term flow mm-hmm. there right because it's not necessarily ever easy you yeah. know we have internal pain for a real reason but what we want is is movement yeah we want growth around that and beyond that and that's just like a flowing river eventually we go Okay, a little rocky, yeah. you know, white yeah. waters. Like, ah! <laughs> yeah. But, you yeah. know, it does eventually get to point like, okay, we're mm-hmm. kind of beyond that. It's moving on. Mm-hmm. And two, even if we enter into some rocky experiences, mm-hmm. if we're treating the root and we're c- cultivating and developing skills and understanding and compassion with self mm-hmm. and with situations, acceptance, things of that nature, those rapids that we mm-hmm. move through, we can navigate them easier. I like that phrase, compassion for the self. 
yeah. self-compassion. We have a mental health care culture that in many regards is, is quite superficial. Um, and again, like you said, not to diminish any of that because there are all sorts of amazing therapists and counselors out there who are, are wonderful, compassionate, brilliant uh, people. Mm -hmm. But I, I do feel like our approach uh, has really become quite oriented around a few types of skills. For instance, there are, a while back, I remember when I was in medical residency, there was a bunch of studies that were being released on cognitive behavioral therapy, and that became the new hot, trendy thing for therapy. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, we have data that proves that cognitive behavioral therapy lessens the the, the impact. The they have some you know scientific paper terminology for this. The mm -hmm. like, uh, what was it? it it's kind of one of these sterile technical terms, yeah. but it, it lessens the burden that people have mm -hmm. from anxiety and depression. And so everyone starts to use CBT and they're mm -hmm. like, CBT is the thing. And you know, all of these tools are great, but like much of our healthcare system, we become <clears throat> so oriented on the tools, they kind of become self-fulfilling, they become what we do, and then we forget to actually look at the person. We just have a toolkit and we do the thing. Yeah. and if we're going to understand the root of any disorder, of, of any dis-ease, be that mental or physical in someone, we have to understand them personally. Yeah. And so if we are accidentally too superficial, if our time is limited with someone, right, and we can't do the deep dive to understand them as a person, well, even if you're a compassionate, intelligent person, it's very hard to get to the root of things. Mm -hmm. And I, for me, I feel like our mental health care system is is accidentally stuck somehow on that. Mm -hmm. It becomes the sort of sterile, clinical uh, sort of environment where people get get worked on, or they they perhaps get some perspective on themselves, but it's through a narrow tool, rather than kind of being more expansive and organic. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'm kind of flailing about for just the right way to describe that, but it's, it's a feeling I have about our mental health care system. And, and I suspect a lot of people will resonate with that. It's like, where's the depth mm -hmm. to this? Mm -hmm. I think people are tired of going to a counselor and kind of talking about themselves and the counselor asks them questions. And that's great. Yeah, It's a possible way to build perspectives, but is that the right thing for them? Mm -hmm. Are there other tools available? Mm -hmm. in, in my work and my privilege is being able to sit with incredible, beautiful people, um, that's a concern that many of them have brought mm. is, you know, it's, it's one thing I've, I've done talk therapy and it's, it's useful. It has mm -hmm, its uses. Mm -hmm. And, um, sometimes it just feels like we're spinning wheels. Uh -huh. We're not getting anywhere. There's no I hear traction. That often from yeah. People. Um, and so that, yeah, it just, <clears throat> how do we, we as, you know, clinicians, therapists, counselors, how do we invite depth into... Yeah, how do we go further with yeah. it, yeah. And something that has, it's always stuck out with me in my, in my line of training um, from my graduate school and then beyond is it was always encouraged for us to get counseling while we were in graduate school. You don't mm, need to know what it's like uh -huh, to, uh -huh. to be able to, to relate, empathize. And that stuck with me. I was like, that makes sense. I, I, I can get behind that. And then in my postgraduate trainings, in teachings, my, my teacher said something off kind of just, I caught it and it really resonated with mm. me. And they said, you know, if you'll never be able to take someone deeper than you're willing to go. Mm. Interesting point. In my own work, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And so that really stuck with me of like, well, mm. I want to be, I want to be of service. I want to explore these avenues. I want to get to the root. I want to understand myself. And so that was like, that was a catapult for me of like, cool. I want to, I want to hold space for people in a way that maybe they haven't experienced before, but mm. it allows them that they can go deeper and that it's okay to go deeper and they can be held as they go deeper mm -hmm. and begin to bring more parts of themselves forward that, mm. you know, in talk therapy, we may not get to. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah I, I really like your term there, holding space. Uh, that's a term that clearly has important meaning to you. Mm -hmm. And I think it's not something people are used to hearing. Can you talk a little bit more about what that means, holding space? Yeah. Um, gosh, it, it's, it's got a, a, a lot of meanings for me. Um, first and foremost, when someone comes into my 
room, my space. <clears throat> I hold the intention, the additive, and, and the belief that you possess everything within yourself you need mm. to be able to, very to heal. Yeah. And it's it's not something that I say explicitly, but it's the intention that I hold. And so within that space, I believe that as we work together, like this is what holding space means for me, mm -hmm. as, we, as, as we work together, you're going to uncover, you're going to be able to see things within. I'm, I'm a mirror, I'm a reflection, mm -hmm. and the space I hold is just to show you that you're capable of these things. Mm -hmm. You may not see it, you may not be aware of it yet, but we're just going to keep chipping away at these beliefs, mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. attitudes mm -hmm. that we have about ourselves, or these traumas or experiences that we've organized around and so holding space really is allowing you to kind of come home to yourself mm, mm -hmm, to let mm -hmm. this i mean I, I i love to use descriptions this beauty this 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 life this wisdom this love this truth come through you mm -hmm. that you can see this in a different way and be empowered to say oh it is that kind of perspective shift again. It's not focusing on the illness of it. It's focusing yeah. on the wellness of yes. it. And the illness is something temporary covering that. Yes. And I, I love your point there. Uh, it is inherently powerful. Human beings are absurdly powerful. Mm -hmm. We have all of this potency. Mm -hmm. And it's only when it gets covered up by, uh, by a trauma or by stress or by... Uh, self-inflicted uh, overwork or whatever else. There's some artificial imposition that ends up on top of that. And it's it's a very, I'm really grokking on your point there. You know, if we focus on this, it gives uh, our attention to that mm -hmm. and it cements that into our psyche. We start to go, okay, yeah, I have anxiety or mm -hmm. whatever it might be. As opposed to, okay, well, this is a temporary covering and here's this, this, Leviathan under the water here. That's just awesome and amazing. And I was like, well, yeah, you got to go a little bit deeper to, to, to refocus on that. And then when that happens, it's like, okay, hang on. I have all of these different elements to me, and this is just some little thing. And there's yeah. a sort of natural dissipation that has that happens when people hold that perspective when they reorient themselves and say, mm -hmm. okay. And that that maybe feeds back to that concept of mind. Uh, I've I've been reading recently. <laughs> the topic of mindset is becoming trendy. There's a yeah, lot of yeah. big bestsellers on mindset that are coming out now. And one thing that a lot of these mindset teachers talk about is they talk about these negative automatic thoughts. Mm -hmm. A lot of our sort of reptile brain programming is defensive or fear based. Yeah, yeah. And it goes back to that Ayurvedic concept of mind, like what is our programming and mm -hmm. do we have to, or do we want to even reprogram that? Do we want yeah. to do the project of changing that? And then that ties back into what you're talking about. So if we accidentally end up over-focusing on illness, that becomes the mind or the automatic thinking processes instead of what really should be the good stuff down here, yeah. the, like, I'm fantastic for all these different reasons and I have this potency and I have this skill set and I have this, if we get distracted by this, uh, it's easy to accidentally worsen the programming of our mind, sure. which is already pretty challenged. Yeah. So it's like, that that's the wrong direction in <clears throat> one sense. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. It, it, it is, um, just as I reflect and I, I look at the work that I, I do and, and uh, the conversations that I have, we, we don't spend a lot of time focused on said problem mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. really is like how where do you want to go what is optimal for you like, mm -hmm. let's bring this agency back into you uh, and it's okay to dream it, it, even if it seems like it's out of reach still we can look at pathways like what's gonna what what's an anchor that I can set myself to mm -hmm. and then we can begin to work with that um, work towards that by focusing on okay what are your strengths uh-huh and what are you willing to do? And this area that there's rub or resistance or or, mm. or wounding or trauma, let's be gentle with that. Uh -huh. You know, let's uh -huh. resource you and let's be... So it's a journey. It's not like we're going to get here overnight. Uh -huh. uh -huh. um, so again, very personalized. Very, very Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, it has to be. It mm -hmm. has to be personalized care. Um, I almost feel like that's more true for mental wellness and health than it is for physical. And it's very much true for physical. Mm -hmm. Like, 
people who, who watch this show and look at our YouTube know that I'm always pushing for personalization. Every biological system is literally unique. And you know, very much I think that that's true. And also it's even more so for the realm of, of psychology mm -hmm. and spirit and emotion and all of that. And it, it, it's so enlivening to hear you talk about this stuff, partially because I know uh, the results that you get with people. Mm -hmm. You know, I am seeing people after they see you. And uh, if you'll forgive me for, uh, for talking you up here a little bit, <laughs> I mean, it, it's really resounding. I mean, I have almost a decade of practice now, and I've worked with a lot of different mental health professionals and all sorts of different philosophies. And uh, consistently, your work is fantastic. Like you're able to crack cases and help people feel so much more vibrant and reconnect with their health in a way that I don't see in much of the conventional system, mm. which is, of course, why we're so happy to have you on yeah, the team. I'm grateful to be here. <laughs> And, and so when we think about the bigger system, right, because my, my hope is always to figure out how to improve the healthcare system at large. Yeah. So I start thinking, okay, well, what, what is it about this approach that we can help share and, and empower other practitioners to start to go, okay, hang on, maybe I am focusing a little too much on, on the clinical system, the sterile mm -hmm. sort of machine Mm -hmm. is, is the way I often end up thinking about medicine for better or worse. Yeah. Like modern medicine ends up being this assembly line. And I think that that's just doubly or triply dangerous with mental health. Yeah. Because it's just that much more refined yeah. and etheric. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And less tangible. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Um, it's good stuff. It's Thank you. It's humbling. Um, and I, I feel so... I feel so in alignment, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's it's a gift, and, and I I do tell so many people like this isn't work. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. is service. Mm -hmm. It's it's such a joy to be a part of it, and it it isn't taxing uh -huh. at all. I think that's awesome. that's, that's the beauty. Of it. It's like I am not gonna fix you. Uh huh. I am gonna hold space and support you, and it's I don't even like to use the word fix. Right, healing. Mm -hmm. And healing is different. It, it, it has different connotations and understanding for each of us. But watching you heal yourself through understanding, through compassion, through mm -hmm. these tools, through processing, through uncovering some of the, the, the muck that we've accumulated mm -hmm. in our lives, it's, right. man. And that accumulation is inevitable. Mm -hmm. We have to find ways to get beyond it. That yeah. We have to be able to be compassionate with ourselves. Absolutely. You said something there that really caught my attention. Um, so many counselors and therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists suffer with burnout. Mm -hmm. It's it's an epidemic. Mm -hmm. It's like a enormous challenge in our healthcare system right now is that the practitioners just can't sustain it. They're just really, really having a hard time, statistically speaking. And yeah. I, I don't remember this off my head, but it's it's like an alarming number. It's like a, a very surprisingly high number of practitioners struggle to want to go to work and help people because they're just in a system that's so ground down. Yeah. And and it catches my attention because you get these really wonderful results stemming from a really different philosophy and that also lets you feel really good about that work which lets you then engage and do a great job. And so again it's like how do we shift what's not working with the current system and put it into something that is working? Mm -hmm. How do we encourage it to evolve past its limitations at yeah. multiple stuff points? And certainly that's, that's, that's got to be something that catches people's attention. It's like if our system worked, we wouldn't be having so much burnout for practitioners yeah. because they'd, they'd be excited. They'd be like, this is wonderful. We're getting results. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. Mm -hmm. The burnout comes from a grind. It's like, oh, gosh, I'm not getting results. This is really hard. I'm oh. mm -hmm. right. And, and so that is that's a really interesting point to me from a systems perspective. Uh, it, it tells us that something's not going right there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I for me personally, I, because I, I used to work in, in environments that were within systems, and, mm -hmm. and you know, that I, I understand them. They're very valuable. They they provide structure and guidance and, and those mm -hmm. things. And there's also great limitations uh -huh. within those. Mm -hmm. And 
what really allowed me to thrive in coming into the AMA clinic is I got to use all of my resources. Mm-hmm. I got to, it, I got to tap into the the field of energy work. I got mm-hmm. to tap into the use of hypnotherapy. Mm-hmm. Um, not only talk therapy, but deeper mindfulness and awareness practices. So you have a broader toolkit that you might use for different people for different situations rather than saying, hey, CBT is the thing. Mm-hmm. I'm a CBT practitioner. You've mm-hmm. got more access. Mm-hmm. And, and depth within those uh-huh. as well. And that leeway, that flexibility and that openness, I mean, it's it, because naturally, I mean, I, I believe all of us in in some way shape or form are, are a creator like mm. we love to we love to do things build things make things mm-hmm. create things uh, mm-hmm. and this is my art form it, ah. it's, ah, i love that that's it, a great way to think about that yeah and so cool being in the healing arts it's i get to i get to practice my craft and mm. support people in doing that and it just it man it blows me away to just watch people watch heaviness fall off of them, watch them come back to themselves. And so that, mm-hmm. how could that be brought into, you know, the systems? And, and I've, I've, I've kind of pushed boundaries in the sense of talking about, you know, I, I hope one day that the, the mental health field mm-hmm. opens to the world of energy work, opens uh-huh. to the world of, you know, deeper supportive work in, in more clinical settings, mm-hmm. because I think it can help people deeper Mm-hmm. and also support the clinicians in a way that they feel more rewarded in the work. Yeah. And it's also in a in a in a roundabout way. I mean, it's less work. Uh-huh. It's uh-huh. less efforting. Like I Right, right, right. I see what you're saying. Yeah. If you are working on a team with someone, there's that old adage that many hands makes light work as opposed to the therapist having to do all the work. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, 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 there's there's teamwork here. Mm-hmm. Let's find the maximally efficient tool for you. Where do you feel like you have openness and movement? We don't need to just sledgehammer on this wall. Yeah. You know, like, well, let's find another path around that, and that's just efficient. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think um, another benefit uh, and and way that is empowering for people who are coming into service is they, letting them have a choice. Like. Mm. Uh-huh, you know, yeah. CBT could be wonderful for certain people, and it may mm. not be for others. Mm-hmm. But you know, so when I when I share with people, this is the this is the spectrum. These are the tools. These are the modalities, and I can weave them or not. It's it's up to you. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. lead where you know I'm here to support your path, and maybe help you dream a little bit bigger, mm-hmm. see potential uh-huh. or possibilities that you may not see. Um, but at the end of the day, every, it's just an invitation for me. You, as the individual, mm-hmm. get to say, yeah. That's interesting to me, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, or I would mm-hmm. like to explore that. Tell me more. Uh-huh. You know, so it, it provides them a way to say, "Okay, yeah, I can get behind that. I want that. I'm, right, I'm wanting right. something more." Yeah, it, it, our system that that we live in in the U.S. particularly, and it's true for most of the Western world, I assume, uh, it is really trying to figure itself out. And at the end of the day, what I want for all my patients Mm -hmm. is for them to get better. That's it. And we all collectively are just trying to figure out how do we do that for people. And I think there's a lot of over-reliance on the current system, on the current methodology. There's a lot of hesitancy to innovate. Mm -hmm. And yet... Many people, almost certainly all the people who are going to be interested in this uh, in this show, understand that there are serious limitations with that methodology. And it, it's a matter of of innovation and effort. And I love I love what you said about creativity. Like I feel that same way when I'm working with a patient, and we're designing a personalized treatment plan. It's like, okay, hang on, what's been missed? How do we get deeper into this? It is a creative act. It's like, yeah. okay, let's let's really uh, open this case up and figure this out. The the conventional approach been tried, it failed. We can do better than that. We have again. I'm going to use the word system. I'm saying system, 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 mm-hmm. system. So I hesitate. But but we have a a, a style here mm-hmm. that that explicitly allows us to escape that sort of standard. Yeah. What do you think it would take for 
other mental health practitioners to move into this style because I, I would love it for the state of health care for there to be 10,000 David Lovelies <laughs> spread around <laughs> tonight. Like, sure. how, how do we take the magic sauce and yeah. distribute it? Uh, that's a great question. You know, it, hmm. I mean, I think uh, maybe it starts with 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 having <clears throat> conversations and and being open to you know there are other ways. Uh -huh. right? There there are these other ways, and I I think it also will be client driven. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. that makes sense. People want uh, as as people want better for their health. They're mm -hmm. gonna in essence kind of like demand I want something greater I want something uh -huh. more I want something deeper and that perhaps has an opportunity to kind of have a wave a shift of you know like let's look at different ways of doing mm -hmm. things let's be open you know let's not just put it off right. as like oh that's woo or that's uh -huh. you know there's no evidence based right. you know research behind that well let's bring evidence based yeah, right. let's, let's begin to you know, what's better evidence than a client coming in and saying, you know, I've worked with so many different people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and here at the AMA clinic, I've worked with you guys for six months and look at where I am. Mm -hmm. What better evidence is that? Mm -hmm. and share your testimonies. Yeah. Demand yeah. better. And then scale that up and you know, eventually you have enough of that aggregated anecdotal data to, to be like, hey, there's really something going on mm -hmm. here. And I think there is this big shift happening. It, so much so with the podcast culture and Joe Rogan and Andrew Huberman and like there, there are really people who are starting to push the boundaries on mm -hmm. these things. I, I feel like part of the limitation is that there's there's kind of a grand demoralization. It's it's hard for people to have the oomph and the gumption and the sense of freedom and the sense of excitement and oh I get to create something yeah. it's hard for people to get into that for both practitioners and for patients mm -hmm. very much so I think our culture has really concreted this sense that this is therapy mm -hmm. people are like oh that's just therapy if I feel anxious or depressed I see a therapist and it's this thing in this container and I know what it is and I hate it, and it didn't work, yeah. and there's nothing else. And somehow people have kind of been, I, 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 I don't know, marketed, somehow demoralized into thinking that this is this is all there is for that. And we yeah. see the same thing, of course, for medicine. People yeah. are like, you see an MD, it's all the same thing. And it's like, well, there are people who run assembly lines. And again, I frequently make this disclaimer. I think you know, healthcare practitioners almost universally are brilliant, compassionate people. But the cage makes the beast. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're mm -hmm. working in the system, they have 15 minutes. It's yeah, you know, very challenging. And yeah. so, maybe part of the demoralization for the practitioners is uh, working with insurance or in a sure. system that says, "Hey, you need to do CBT or DBT." Or and they're like, "Okay, I guess that's what I got hired for." Mm -hmm. Like, no, 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 what we really want is for people to feel better. Yeah. We want people to heal fundamentally and not come and see us again because they feel so fantastic. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, Optimally, yes, that's <laughs> ideally, yes. <laughs> when you have a system that is oriented for profit and is run by like administrators and bureaucrats and managers, that's not really in their incentive to get people better. Mm -hmm. And I, I hate to like doom and gloom and maybe that's a little too far, but but there is something odd going on. I don't I can't quite place mm -hmm. why everything is so stuck and I worry that it's profit incentive. Yeah. Rather than health incentive. Yeah, yeah. And of course the magic to all of this, the sort of secret sauce, is that when people feel better, they're 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 more powerful. Yeah. They produce more for society. They go and help other people. Like it's just this brilliant cascade. Yeah. It's this this remoralization that just is this wellspring of awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Challenging. Yeah, you know, and, and just hearing you know you talk through that, it's a beautiful practice. Like, can you can you imagine and and feel what that is going mm -hmm. to be like? Mm, that is it is a reality uh -huh. it, in in one sense i mean as we're talking shift and we're looking at you uh -huh. know 
pushing the boundaries of medicine and just being innovative and doing things differently, that ripple will mm. catch on. Mm-hmm. And just imagine what society will look like mm. thriving. That's kind of mind blowing. Like I almost can't bring myself to imagine that, right? you know, it's like, and again, it goes like, what is, why can't I? That's weird. Right. But it really is hard to mm-hmm. imagine it, mm-hmm. to be like, oh, that, that really could happen. Mm-hmm. And it's what I fight for every day. And yet still for myself, I'm like, I have a block on really okay. imagining that. It's fascinating. Mm. There's, there's a, a lot of complexity. Yeah. Yeah. But I like and also, there's no complexity. Like sure. it's also just programming. That's actually maybe sure. negative automatic thoughts. It's like, Neil, this is hard. Well, I don't know. Is it? Mm. Or are you just thinking it? Is? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so fascinating. Yeah. But I mean, just introducing or, or bringing those possibilities. I mean, if we're not tapping into those as well, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. how are we going to be able to access them? I mean, mm-hmm. I think tapping right, right, into right. them, right, is like, oh, that that is a potential. Uh, Let me open uh, to that potential. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm recalling a, a conversation that you and I had maybe a year ago mm-hmm. and we were having tea or something and we were like, there's something like very nearby yeah, that's yeah. like trying <laughs> to come through. I had this sort of vision of like a meteor like cutting through the veil, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. reality is shifting. Mm-hmm. It's like a sci-fi concept or something. But there is there is this feeling of like, yeah, just behind that conceptual veil. Mm-hmm. There really is something amazing for our health care system. We can become health care system again instead of illness management system. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, that's very powerful. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, that might be a cool meditation to leave everybody on here. Yeah. If you guys can all think about what that would feel like, first personally, for you to be in wonderful health, physically and mentally, what does that look like and feel like? And then the broader perspective, you know, there's that old saying that reality is built from consensus. And so the more of us that are thinking, what does that look like if everybody's doing that? Mm-hmm. The more energy that ends up holding. And, and I mean, I know that maybe sounds a bit woo, but no, there's a real reality to that. If people have that intention, then they unconsciously start to work for it. So maybe that's our retraining of that mind yeah, there collectively. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. David, thank you very much. Oh, man. Pleasure. Good. Always. Mm-hmm. We'll see you guys another time soon.